Uh, two weeks ago, I did a giveaway for this book, and I told you to just go send me a message at my Etsy store, and only four people did that, so I put their names on the pieces of paper, and we're going to draw for them, and it is Hector, so the book is on its way. I made you a Spotify playlist, my 90s babies, anybody that had the 90s, either growing up in the 90s and high school in the 90s. You were in your 20s in the 90s, or your 30s in the 90s. I've got the coolest, it's got like over an hour, no, uh, over 60 songs in it, over three hours of music in it. It's the 90s playlist on Spotify. Please go enjoy it. I made it for my daughter and I, because it was a really beautiful time in our lives together. And uh, yeah. So I also wanted to create it for you because I thought you guys might like it. Don't forget we do live videos the second Saturday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Set an alarm for that. Our Zoom meeting patrons is the first Saturday and second Saturday of every month. So that's coming up. Videos I'm working on. I'm working on a video of everything that is in an Amanita muscaria mushroom because we're going to start talking about the entourage effect. If you don't know what the entourage effect is, you can go to my CBD video. I talk about it in there. And then I'm working on a video on using Amanita topically for pain, an oil-based thing, and I'm almost done with it. It has it had to steep for a long time. So that video, you should be looking for that sometime around the middle of February. Also, so many of you are asking me about my smoke blends. I'm so glad you like them and you're sending me amazing, beautiful messages. And it does my heart good because that's why I do it, but they are very labor intensive to make. And I list them and they sell out really quickly. So look for them around the middle of February. If you're watching this, all you can do is go to the description, click on the Etsy store and see if anything is there. If it is not, I'm working on it. Give it two to three weeks. Usually I do it about once a month, somewhere around the middle of the month. I try to restock the store. Okay, let me say this before you even comment. <laughs> so this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I want you to know that I speak not from ignorance. I talk about it in this video that you're about to watch, but you need to know this, so please pay attention to this. I am aware of all of the research about this, about the precognition and about the Stanford experiments, even the robot experiments that just happened recently. I also got into, a long time ago, about eight years ago, the government's gateway program the Stargate program, read it all before the government even released it recently, went through the program materials, learned how to do all of it. I am intimately familiar with the law of attraction. There's a big difference between how it actually works and what these new age gurus are shilling. This video is about how damaging it is and what it does to people and what it does to you. The next video after this one, part two, will be how it actually works. Okay, now that I've said that, here's your video. <laughs> hey y'all, it's been a while since we've just sat and talked and I've uh, been putting this off. I wanna make it though, it's been on my mind since the fall and it's now the end of January beginning of February, and it's gonna be a really unpopular opinion. It has to do, obviously, with the law of attraction and what I saw on my eight and a half gram trip of the blue mushroom. And, and I need you to hang on because I was a proponent of it. I held on to it tightly. I believed in it for years. It was hard to let it go there are two kinds of people, people with an external locus of control and people with an internal locus of control. And locus just meaning focus or point, internal meaning you feel like things that happen to you, you have control over them. You feel like you have control over your life and your circumstances and your future. And people with an external locus of control feel like nothing is within their power. They feel mo more like a victim or they have more of a fatalistic attitude about the world and that there is, they have very little power or control over everything. And they tend to blame other people. And people that have an external locus of control tend to whine and complain a lot. They tend to be the kind of people that give up their power regularly. 
But here's the thing about the law of attraction. The law of attraction, people who are proponents of it and say that they can see the proof that it works in their lives, they are engaging in a cognitive bias and noticing when something they wanted manifests and then they are ignoring not actively it just it's real easy to forget a want or a thought or a focus when it doesn't happen and to just sort of dismiss it and only focus on the things that happen how do you put a time limit on it because if you want to manifest a blue feather and it takes 10 years is that the law of attraction i know that you want to say well you're just not and then fill in the blank and so this gets dangerous because it's victim blaming and this is where i have a problem with the law of attraction because i can tell you i'm probably one of the most motivated people in the world i'm highly intelligent capable and strong and well read i research and when i learned about the law of attraction i looked at my life and the things that i had managed to accomplish and I knew it was true. I could feel it. I could feel the energy that I put into my life and going after the things I wanted and the things that I have gotten and accomplished. People look at it and think, you know, I've lived many lifetimes in one life and the things that I have managed to do seem unbelievable for one person. And I could easily say it's the law of attraction. I use the law of attraction to my advantage and I can show you and then I could make a whole video on this is what I did and then this but I can tell you now looking back on it it's because I had a lot of help it's because I happen to have good DNA it's because I happen to have people with money that stepped in and supported me and did some things just when I needed it it's because there was a lot of luck involved. and you can say well I just manifested those people no they were already around when I decided I wanted to do something. But I can tell you that there was a point where all that stopped and things turned bad. And that was Hurricane Katrina. And a lot of people said during that time that it was the negativity of the area and the accumulation of all those people that attracted the hurricane. That's the biggest bunch of, oh my God, victim blaming bullshit. And that was the beginning of the worst 15 years of my life. And during that time is when I learned about the law of attraction and actively started working on turning my life around and turning things around and manifest. And it didn't matter because when everything is hard, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from and there's someone in your life that just can't handle it and they have mental health issues from the stress and the pain of it and you've got children that are hurting and suffering and you're watching that hurting and suffering and the bills can't be paid and bill collectors are calling and your car's breaking down all the time because it's a piece of shit car and everybody's eating bad food and everybody's mental health is all over the place when your whole life is just trying to get to the next minute it can actually hurt you to believe that you are failing at the law of attraction when you're doing everything right making every next right choice i was working out and i was still going and hiking climbing camping whether i had the money or not i would eke it out sell something just to take care of my mental health i can go down the list if you stepped into my life and said well you just need to do this you're just not doing that well if you'll try this if you'll do that i was doing it all i was subscribed to newsletters and everything about the law of attraction and when you wake up and you feel like shit and you can't get out of bed and the panic is closing in and the benzos are making you feel stupid and you get up and you do it anyway that's the next right thing and then when nothing changes, then you just look for smaller and smaller things to manifest. I'm just going to manifest a nickel on the ground. I, I got to that point. And never mind the fact that it would take me six months. When I found the nickel on the ground, I'm like, oh my God, it works. Very sus. I was celebrating the teeniest, tiniest of wins. And I was doing all the right things. And the universe was conspiring in the most amazing ways against me. I would have the luck of finding out the next thing with my business and then it would start to go and it would start to work and I was going to make good money from this particular agreement. And then the most bizarre thing that people would say never happens would happen to cause one thing after another to happen that never happens to happen so that I not only didn't get the thing, but it cost me money. And that's like, you know, <laughs> At some point, I understand that all these gurus mean well.
but sort of like, do they though, really? Because if any of them had stepped into my life at that point and said, it's your own fault, anyone would look at them and be like, holy shit, you piece of shit motherfucker. What is that? Oh my God, that's horrible. But that's what they're saying. And they're taking advantage of people that are hurting. And you know what happens to all, where they all came from, all these gurus? They've made it and they got lucky and they had help and they got lucky and they were believing in the law of attraction and they got lucky and then they said, see, it works. And then they weren't just living with it. They were making their money off selling you how to do something that should be a law that should be available for anyone to be able to do. Now I understand they, they help people get hope when they need hope, but for how long before it runs out? So before you hate on me, too much. There is energy in the universe and it's real and it works. Here's where you're going to hate me. So what I saw when I did my eight and a half grams was I actually got to see that energy in motion and I got to see people thinking positive things and holding love in their heart and I saw it embodied as energy and moving to other places over the globe and over the over the earth zooming around thoughts of love good deeds and compassion moving and so that is very real thoughts become things in that when you have a focused energy on something whether you can see it or not, you're affecting things around you. And if you have a negative attitude and a negative mindset, you can't help that you feel like shit, but you can help the words you tell yourself every day. So if you say, shitty things are always gonna happen to me, that's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, shitty things happened to me for 15 years, but I didn't ever say always i just said jesus christ i feel like i can't get a fucking break and i'm exhausted that 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 was how i felt but i wasn't going out into the future and predicting it and saying things never happened for me i would be tempted to sometimes say i can't catch a break and then i would have to stop myself and say uh, so far however i have caught a break and that you know the food bank had food and I have caught a break because I was able to find something to sell. And so far, I'm the only one going hungry, but I'm still feeding my children. So, I mean, I'm catching breaks. Don't pick and choose whether you aren't or aren't catching breaks. You're just not catching the big ones that matter right now. Maybe soon you'll catch a decent break. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's a more real, realistic kind of thing. And that's why shitty people can accomplish amazingly shitty things because they just have their mind set on it. And when your mind is focused on something, it is generating energy. And the more you say it and think it and put power and energy behind it, the more you stoke that energy. Honoring pain isn't stoking the fires of negativity and pain. It's where your mind and your thoughts are which can be, I'm exhausted, I, I feel so fed up, I'm a good person, I love the world, I love people, this isn't how I wanna live, I wanna have money to, to help me and my family, but also others, I don't wanna keep hurting, I wanna feel better, I wanna do good things, why can't I? That's an honest expression of pain, but you know, you're also expressing your beauty and your goodness. But if in all that shit you say, I will fucking make somebody pay. If you're getting on the internet and you're just looking for ways to be a victim. If you're going and attacking people on the internet. If you're just looking for someone to be wrong about something. That's where you're putting your energy. And that says a lot about the energy you're stoking and planting that you're going to walk right into in your future. So having a negative attitude is different than creating a negative attitude, perpetuating pain. And I can tell you in all of my worst times and experiences and years, I cried 
for my pain and the pain of those around me and I cried for the people that I couldn't help. There's a big difference between that and hating people and wanting to make people pay. Now believe me, a lot of people did a lot of shitty things to me and I would have loved to have made them pay, but I didn't really have the energy and it's not who I am. And I got attacked a lot. There was a lot of pain and negativity to go around in my family and extended family and they hurt me the worst. They did a lot of damage to me, but I never once wanted to hurt them back. I just wanted them to go away. And sometimes I had to get the law involved to make them go away. But I was doing the next right thing. And it's because my energy was focused on peace. I just wanted peace. And that's what was truly in my heart. That was the energy I was putting out there was I truly do want peace. I want to love people and I want to be loved. I want goodness. I want the world to stop suffering. I want there to be less pain. And I'm willing to get rid of whomever I have to get rid of to get there. And eventually I wound up alone on my balcony for nine months. And that was the beginning, finally, after 15 years. But it took 15 years to keep cutting people out because I would still recognize people sort of at the same level I was and, and see them as, as trustworthy when they weren't, you know? I was still making some bad decisions. But what I saw was so beautiful. And when I was on those mushrooms, and you see that on camera when I'm talking to you about the comment section, when I talk to you about how it's the most important thing, how I feel all of you and your beauty and your love, that's why I'm tell. not only could I feel it, but I got to witness it. Like thoughts become things in so much as, yeah, sort of they become things in the real world, but what's more important is what they become inside your body. And when you think something beautiful for someone else, you affect their cells, you affect their physical body. And likewise, when you think negatively about someone, you are doing damage to their cells, to their body. And it's why I'm having such a hard time with this channel and why I've sat and chatted a lot less since that mushroom trip because I got the most amount of negativity that I've ever gotten from a video from that video. People made videos about me. People, one person made a long blog post and they time stamped everything and shamed me through the whole video and my trip sitters, um, patrons, I had to remove patrons. It was really unbelievable. And you can say, don't let it bother you, it doesn't matter, but I'm telling you, when people are that negative about you, it affects your body. And when I had that many people all at once, it took me down and I didn't sleep. Plus I was having to process that trip and I was really happy about it, you know, and feeling really good about it. And then that was followed by the holidays. And I made, I spent, geez, I must have spent three weeks on that video about Santa Claus, the history of Santa Claus. Hardest video I've ever made. If you ever care, you can go read the first comment. I pinned it to the top about that video. The amount of attacks I got, the amount of hate from random people that don't even follow my channel, but then also some people that had been with my channel from the beginning. I had to wind up deleting it all because it was so negative and awful. That, in addition to the other one, I was just recovering from the other video when that one happened, and I just had to take a break. And I had a lot of other videos in the pipeline. I don't want to belabor this point, but anyway, it took from then till the end of January now for me to finally heal from the attacks from all of that. And it's made me realize why people that are in the public eye finally do have to hire help to weed through their messages and any mail that they get and comments and all that because it really can take you down. The only things that got me through was, and it was, it's, it's true and it's real, I don't know where all of you came from, but my channel had this huge growth spurt of about 3,000 people in about two months time. 
and the love and the beauty from you guys, that came in and sort of countered all of that negativity. And I can feel it. I feel you. The positivity and the positive thoughts and the good. I The beauty and the love works. Manifesting things, not so much. Victim blaming with the law of attraction is shitty. I'm not saying the law of attraction doesn't work. I'm saying it doesn't work the way they say it does. It's not as easy to bring negativity on yourself and negative situations as you think. The world is a lot more lawless and chaotic. We have a lot less control over what happens to us than we would like to think. However, we have control over what we tell ourselves and the choices we make and the actions we take and those that we choose to allow in our lives. And that is where our power, if you tell yourself enough positive things, just positive statements, not be happy, not be positive, positive leaning statements like this really sucks and I want things to be better for me and for the people around me. You do that enough and you will find more ways to take more positive action. And it may be slow and small. Again, 15 years it took me to get to a place where I pay my bills, mostly. I have a channel. Things come to me now that people send me because they love me and they love the work I'm doing. And nobody in my life is abusing me now. I don't have much anxiety and I have good natural medicine. And I also know one act of nature could take it all away. One accident on the road could take it all away. So I'm not saying this is because I did this. I'm saying it is a combination of thoughts become things, actions become your life, and sheer luck. And it'll change. It'll get shittier again. It'll get hard again because that's what life does. It's, it, it ebbs and it flows and that's okay. I have a lot more now in my arsenal to deal with the downward turning things. And I've had some really hard blows since I've made this channel. But the difference is now I've got room because life isn't just piling the shit on one after another. And for that, I'm grateful. But also it's just random for now. And I'm okay with that. I know what I've seen. I know where I've been. I know that the mushroom and I are working together and there's something to be said for being plugged in and having your ear to the ground because I think it gives you a closer line to what is and potentially what's coming so that you can maybe make some better choices preemptively and we'll oh lord I don't know if I'm even ready to go public with that shit about the mycelium and the mushroom and precognition that'll be thoughts for another day if you'd like to support the channel, look at the first comment, buy me a coffee, and check out the merch. I love you, beautiful people.